What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys along through a tour of my home studio. So this is where I work, you know, where, where I do everything that I do pretty much, you know, school, gaming, everything. So this little space right here, um, I did a video on at the start of the year of how I put it together, you know, built the little slat wall behind me. But in today's video, we're going to be checking out how it's, you know, evolved. We're going to be checking out things that I've added over the course of the year and kept because I did take out some things. Um, but here's the final form of my home studio. The first thing you'll notice when you walk into the room to the left is my workspace setup. I actually spent a lot of time here editing all my videos and photos for different platforms which I post to. I'm also taking some business courses online currently, so I do all of that here as well. The desk I use is called the Smart Desk Connect from Autonomous, which I got in a white top and black frame. I got the top in their XL size and I'm glad I did that because I've grown to love having a large desk space. Autonomous claims it's smart but that just means you can control it wirelessly through their app and do other things like schedule sit stand sessions as well. It's got a keypad for manually controlling the desk if you're wondering. I paired the desk with the ErgoChair Pro Plus from Autonomous 2 which I've now used for almost a year. I mean it's not a Herman Miller but I can promise it works wonders for you know working long hours. Particularly, I love that you can adjust virtually every part to suit different situations when using it. It doesn't come with a headrest, but that might just end up taking away from its minimal look. They sell these in different styles, but I went for the black frame, TPE, and mesh combo, which in my opinion looks great. I've got an Alex drawer from Ikea under the desk for more storage since that's very limited in here. I also use drawer organizer called Sumera from Ikea to organize different small items within each drawer. Lastly, I like to store a bunch of random cables as well as large items in the bottom drawer which I like to call the messy drawer. Under the desk, there's also a step can and I'm sure you guys can guess what that's for. It's a soft close step can and it's the perfect size for a desk or a small office space. The lift engine arm mount from Amazon Basics is holding up my monitor mounted through a grommet hole on the right side of the desk. There's usually some small wobbles when the desk is hit but nothing major. The suggested maximum weight capacity of the monitor arm is 25 pounds and my 40 inch monitor weighs just under 23 pounds. You can tilt, extend and retract the arm for flexibility and finding that perfect position. One thing I hate about the stand though is the base. Honestly I think it's too big and it takes up too much desk space. I wish they made them like the LG Ergo stands. The base on those are usually super compact and modern looking. Mounted onto the arm I've got my 40 inch 5K ultra wide from LG. This is definitely the most expensive monitor I've bought but also the best I've used for my workflow so far. When it comes down to editing videos in Final Cut Pro, it's awesome having a nice wide 5K display for seeing more in less time. It's like having two 4K monitors side by side without the border in between which is perfect for multitasking. It has a nano IPS LCD display which can be a little problematic but mostly when used in bright rooms. Personally, I just close the drapes in the room when working. The fact that this has only 72 hertz is a bummer, but you know, it also wasn't designed for gamers. On the top right corner of the monitor, I've mounted the Insta360 Link. This is a 4K webcam with a lot of versatility. The things you can do with this camera is pretty cool and honestly I haven't seen anything like it before. It's got a ton of useful modes for people working or schooling from home. One of my favorite features is the AI tracking mode which makes the camera follow your face across the room. I've also got a BenQ screen bar halo mounted onto the top of the monitor for some desk lighting. This reduces the amount of time I use my workspace light since it keeps my entire desk space lit up. It comes with a wireless control knob for quickly changing things like temperature as well as brightness. Underneath the monitor I have a desk shelf from Grovemate. I mean, these things are not cheap, but you can tell that they're also not cheaply made when you get one of them. I got mine in matte black to match my desk frame and align with the black and white desk aesthetic. It's also been great for adding some more storage for small items at my desk. With my monitor pretty much centered to it, I get about 3 inches of space on either side for, you know, smaller accessories. On the right side, I've got a wide HomePod Mini from Apple. I picked this one up just for, you know, voice control, but the sound quality is actually not too bad for music. I found myself bumping my Spotify playlist through it sometimes. And I've also, you know, got a bunch of smart devices scattered across my office and the entire house. So this has been a, you know, welcome addition for voice control. I use a pair of white and black desktop speakers from Audio Engine called A2+. These little guys look great and fit the minimal aesthetic and to top it all off, they sound pretty good for how small they are. My main use for them is listening to audio when, you know, editing or just playing music while I'm in the room. 
For my room, I find that the base is okay, but a subwoofer can be picked up as an add-on if you want more base. I hate that they don't come with stands though. You'd expect for the price that they go for that they would come with some high quality stands. Mine are called Canto S2s and I picked them up off Amazon. And now that the speakers are pointing upward, I'm telling you, the sound quality has gotten so much better. I definitely recommend doing that. I hate having a crowded desk, so I mounted the Throne Max Zoom Boom arm onto the far right corner of the desk. It's got a matte black finish and a modern look to it. The arm uses a clip system for cable managing a single cable which I've got connected to the mic. Over time, I've noticed that the clips come undone quite often when the arm is being moved around a lot. Besides that, it's been a pretty solid space saver on the desk as well. The Shure SM7B is the mic I use at my desk. I've got that mounted onto the boom arm and the weight hasn't been, you know, that much of an issue. It's a dynamic XLR mic and still the best sounding one I've used so far. To use it though, you'll need a cloud lifter and an audio interface which of course increases the overall cost of the package. I've been using it since I first set up my room about a year ago and I've never had any issues. As a matter of fact, this voiceover is being done using the same mic. Personally, I love having my phone in an upright position when I'm at my desk, so earlier during the year, I picked up a MagSafe stand and wireless charger combo from Anchor. They call it the PowerWave 2-in-1. The top side provides about 7.5 watts of maximum power for iPhones, while the base provides 5 watts of maximum power for any wireless charging earbuds. It worked very well for use with my Pro Max iPhone at the start, but since I picked up AirPods Pro 2, I've struggled with getting them both to fit on there at the same time. It's also definitely not as fast charging as a high wattage power adapter, but it gets the job done fairly quickly while I'm at my desk. I use a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro to power my desk setup. It's kind of how I maintain my mobile workstation. I've now had it for a little over a year and it's been the main driver of my workflow when I'm at home or when I'm on the road. I have the most experience with Final Cut Pro when it comes to video editing but it's exclusive to Apple laptops only so having a Mac has been great. I love being able to easily make a single Thunderbolt connection between my Mac and my docking station to get my setup completely up. Disconnecting from mobile work is just as easy to do by unplugging the single cable. I picked up a 40 inch 5K ultra wide so I wouldn't have to use my MacBook's display while I'm at my desk. This way I can keep the MacBook in clamshell mode in a vertical stand to save desk space. I picked the stand off Amazon but it really isn't anything special to be honest. It really just works. Under the desk shelf there's a 10G docking station which I've recently added you know, to increase connectivity options on my desk. It's got all kinds of ports but it's also lacking some. I plan on using 10G transfer speeds with my home NAS server to do a lot of heavy duty editing moving forward. I'll talk more about this in a server upgrade video which I've got planned for early next year. It also allows me to charge my MacBook Pro through a single cable using power delivery while displaying 5K resolution uh, to my monitor through display port. It certainly wasn't a cheap purchase but it's been worth it so far and there's very limited 10G dock options out there. The Space Gray MX Mechanical and MX3S make up my main keyboard and mouse productivity combo. They've got a ton of features that's geared towards speeding up productivity workflows. They also work great when used as a pair especially when using the Logi Options Plus and the Flow software. One of my favorite things to use the 3S for is vertical scrolling through video timelines when editing. It also makes absolutely zero clicking noise, which I've now grown to love. I picked up the MX Mechanical with blue switches for a more clicky office sound. To support my wrist while using the mouse, I use a gliding wrist rest, which I picked up from Delta Hub, and it looks and works great. When used correctly, I've also heard that it can help fix wrist related pains like carpal tunnel. Below the combo, I've got an extra large dark gray leather desk mat, which I bought off Amazon as well. I prefer leather, you know, to most other styles because they're very easy to clean and they just look good. The rest of the things on my desk are ornamental and meant to add some aesthetic to the space. I've got a fake plant tucked away in the corner to add some greenery to the desk. I've also stuck an 80 inch LED strip on the back end of the desk to help create contrast with the wall behind it. It uses 3M tape, which I honestly hate, but you know, I'd love to hear about a better option if you've got one. The light strip is from Nanoleaf and also comes with voice and app control. Above the desk, I've installed some decor lighting. These are called the Nanoleaf Elements, which double as both home decor and ambient lighting. They're fully modular and can be installed in different unique patterns. Like Nanoleaf Strip, this also has Siri and HomeKit integration. Above the elements, I mounted a small 45 inch Moslander shelf from Ikea and placed a couple of framed iPhones and two smaller fake plants on there. The dismantled iPhones are the 10 and the 4S and they look great up there even though I initially thought, you know, they probably won't. Under and around the desk, I've also kept all wild cables out of sight as best as I can. I use cable management trays, zip ties, double sided tapes and pretty much any other cable management method that I know of 
and I think it all turned out great. Let's move on to the large wall that Sajay sent to my desk. This is a nine foot tall slat accent wall that we installed last year during the first room transformation. I'm happy it's held up pretty well and still looks great. The stain color is dark walnut and the slats cover the entire wall starting from the front all the way to the end. I would planned on placing my desk, you know, against this wall, but that didn't pan out due to reasons we'll go into later. At the top there, I've got some more nano leaf strips to add some down light to the wall. I've also placed a large fake plant. I bought off Artiplanto, which, you know, I think looks great when paired with the wall. I've got a security camera in the top right corner of the room, so I have eyes on the space at all times. It's called the Akara Camera Hub G3, and it also doubles as a Wi-Fi hub for other Akara smart devices in my office. One of those devices is a motion sensor that triggers when my office window is open or closed. I love that Akara devices work with HomeKit and Siri too, which is great, you know, for integration into my smart office ecosystem. The only problem I ran into was not having an outlet to plug it into after mounting it up high in the corner, so I had to buy a 16 feet cable, and you know, I had to run that from the camera through cable concealers to an AC outlet. If you want a less obvious camera that's easy to install and also doesn't require any cables, you can check out the BC2. It's got a 1080p maximum resolution, PIR motion detection, night vision, two-way talk, and even promises up to 50 days of battery life. You can add a micro SD to it for local storage and it even works with Alexa and Google, but unfortunately, no HomeKit or Siri. There's a huge window on the wall adjacent to the slat wall, which lets in a great amount of light. In fact, it's the exact reason I chose this room for my workspace. The amount of light can be a bit much at times, but I got, you know, a top-down honeycomb blind and gray drapes to black out the room at any time of the day. These also provide insulation for noise coming from the outside of the window, which is great for when I need, you know, some quiet in here. I got the drapes in ash gray to complement all the white in the room, and they've definitely changed the room for the better. There's a smaller sit-stand desk that I leave next to the window, which I use for filming product videos. Remember when I said I talk more about the reason why my main desk isn't up against the slat wall? Well, here's the reason why. I went ahead and added wheels to the desk so I can easily move it around, you know, to shoot all kinds of videos ranging from overhead to time lapses. The white top is from Ikea and the black frame is from Motion Gray. It's definitely not the ideal tabletop size I'd love for what I use it for, but you know, it works for the room size for now. I also think it makes the room feel smaller, but it won't be in here for too long. I've got a major project I'm currently working on that's definitely going to solve that problem. Behind the doors of the single closet in the room, I've got my gaming setup. So this is where you'll find me when, you know, I'm taking a break from work or honestly just chilling. I put the gaming setup inside the closet so I can save some space, but honestly, I also wanted to just build something very unique. Between work and school, I still make sure I get some game time in for games I really enjoy. There's a single cast of smart outlet in the bottom right corner, which I've installed, you know, to provide power to the space. I had my tabletop cut from MDF board and Home Depot and install it in there using wood anchors. This is also way cheaper than buying a desk. I also added two white long lag shelves from Ikea to the top and the bottom of the closet to hold different items. The bottom shelf is there to prevent my PC from pulling in dust from the carpet, while the top shelf holds my Corsair HS80 wireless headset, as well as ornamental items like the Nike Freak ones I won off NBA 2K, as well as a frame Game Boy Advance. The headset works great for PS5 and PC, which I often switch between when using it. Next up is my RTX 4090 Beast, which, you know, is below the desk at the center of the bottom shelf. This is a water-cooled PC, and I picked out every part and put it together myself at the beginning of the year. I actually started out as a PC gamer as a kid before moving on to the console gaming when portability became very important to me. Since I picked up the Steam Deck, PC gaming portability has become, you know, not much of an issue. Personally, I prefer using the PC for most of my games since I get the best performance as well as visuals. I also use the PC for some photo editing on Lightroom and Photoshop as well as 4K gameplay recording on software like OBS. Tucked away in the bottom left corner, I've got a Ubiquiti Flex mini switch for my wired internet connectivity. Personally, I hate gaming on Wi-Fi due to lower speeds and unstable connections. It uses PoE, which means it only requires a single Ethernet cable to provide power and internet, which, you know, reduces clutter. I'm currently looking to replace the switch with one that supports 10G speeds for local file transfer, you know, with my NAS home server. At the center of the closet, I've wall mounted a 48 inch LG C2 OLED. It's paper thin and mounts nicely for that modern look, which also ends up freeing up desk space underneath. The screen can get pretty bright and the picture quality, especially with HDR turned on, is completely insane. 
Perfect blacks and colors make gaming on it a treat every time. It's also got four HDMI 2.1 ports that all support up to 120Hz refresh rate. Uh, and it's got powerful gaming features like variable refresh rate support and a lot more. There's a 16 inch 4K portable monitor below the TV which I use as a second monitor with my PC. I use this while the main TV displays gameplay to view and use other software like web browsers or screen recorders. It also draws a lot less power than a traditional 27 inch or higher secondary monitor and also takes up a whole lot less space. Right next to that monitor there's an Elgato Stream Deck. I use this for quick access to shortcuts. It's got a 15 key LCD screen that's completely customizable. I'm still figuring out how to do a lot of things with it since I just got it, but so far I've been able to set it up to access some quick things like Spotify and my internet speed test. For my gaming keyboard and mouse combo, I use a black combo of the G915 and the G Pro X from Logitech's gaming keyboard and mouse lines. Just like the productivity pair in my desk setup, these work great together as a gaming pair. I've got both connected to my PC through Logitech's low latency USB dongles. The keyboard can also be connected wirelessly through Bluetooth, but the mouse only has one mode of wireless connectivity. I don't usually play a lot with the keyboard and mouse combo, but when I do, this combo has always pulled through. The desk mat underneath those is an extra light gray felt pad. I went for felt in here to add some texture to the desk area. It also contrasts well with the black mouse and keyboard combo sitting right on it. To the left of the second monitor, there's a pair of dual sense controls which I use for gaming with the PS5 as well as my PC. I also picked up two Razer chargers for each one in matching black and white colors for a clean look and honestly, I'm loving it. It's definitely been fun playing games using the dual sense with all the improvements from the last generation of DualShock controllers. In the left corner there, I've also got my all black digital PS5. I've always loved the minimal look of this thing and being able to quickly fire it up to catch up on PlayStation exclusives. Games like Ragnarok and Horizon have been fun to play on it and just taking a break either to play on this or the PC can be very therapeutic, at least for me it is. I balance between console and PC a lot but mainly use the PS5 just for exclusives and the subscription service I've got on there. The last thing in that corner is my RGB mic from HyperX. It's a simple USB plug and play mic that works well for the times when I need you know, to record anything in that space. Space. It's got knobs for manually increasing the gain level as well as switching between different polar patterns. I love the all white look which helps in adding some light to that corner as well. In the right corner, I've got a 10 inch digital frame that displays pixel art. There's a lot of creative ways that you can use the Pixel 64, but I mainly use it as a way to display time or as a counter for my channel stats. In the same corner, I've got my Switch OLED sitting in a docking station as well as the Pro Controller. I'll be honest, I've barely used the Switch since I got the Steam Deck. I'm still deciding whether or not to keep it in there or just reduce the clutter and take it out. For lighting in the closet, I installed some lines in a zigzag pattern underneath the top shelf. These lines are also home kit and Siri compatible like other Nanoleaf gear I use, which again is great for you know my smart home office ecosystem. The lines can also be set up to mirror the TV screen connected to a PC where you've got the Nanoleaf desktop app installed on. I can definitely confirm that it works and looks great when gaming on PC. I've also got a single 80 inch smart LED strip on the top shelf and under the desk for some ambient lighting. Cable management has always been a tough thing to do in a space like this one since you know I can't get behind a desk but I'm glad I was able to hide things away pretty well here. I use the same things and the same methods from the other setup like cable management trays, cable runways, zip ties and all you know other things like it. As for the chair I use for this setup I just share the same one that I use with the other setup with this one. That way you know I can avoid having too much furniture in the same space. Something cool I've also done with the gaming setup doors is set up an automation where once you open the doors the lights come on and when you shut the doors everything turns off. That way I can conserve power and make sure that things turn off you know just by closing the door. When the doors are closed you'll notice that I've mounted three peg boards onto the wall next to the closet and this you know I did to add more storage to the room. The peg boards are freed up a lot more space in my drawers and I picked them up locally from Ikea and you can get you know all these different hooks for mounting all kinds of stuff onto them. I store items I usually need quick access to such as my camera gear, my backpack, you know batteries, extra keyboard and all sorts of things. On the adjacent wall I've also built in more wall storage. This one holds different colored background boards which I use for overhead shots. I had them cut out of thin boards from Home Depot and then use wallpaper to create you know a variety of colors. I found that they're great for switching up the background for product videos or any overhead shot really. I love having these close by too so I'm glad I was able to create storage space for them on the wall there. Finally, I've got a tall fan from Noma for the entire room. It's nothing special, not smart or nothing like that but it does its job and I'm happy with it. Honestly though, I wish it wasn't so loud. 
There it is though, that's the workspace and gaming setup I'll be finishing the year 2022 with. I'm glad I was able to get the room to where it is right now and I cannot wait to see how things evolve from here. Links to everything I mentioned will be down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video. It's Tommy and I'm out y'all.